Hello, it's Scott Manley here. We are 900 days into our mission to Tylo. We are on cruise, on course for Jewel, and we are at the point where we're about to make final course corrections to bring ourselves into the encounter we want. But most importantly, or more importantly, we have some extra payload that we want to drop. We have these space probes, and two of them have parachutes, and it's time for us to drop them prior to aero capture. Now, the reason that we're dropping these first is we want these to land on Lath and Jewel using their parachutes, and we want to make sure that they do so a long way away from the the spacecraft. We don't want them to do this at the same time, because once you're descending through an atmosphere, you either have the option of ending the mission or uh, or you're stuck there, right? You can't switch to another spacecraft while en ending the mission, without ending the mission. So uh, by doing this, what we're early on, we only need a small kick in our velocity to make sure we arrive at different times. So we don't get di only ditching two. The other two space probes we're going to carry all the way in. They don't have parachutes because they would otherwise be redundant. They are going to orbit around and do their own thing. So, uh, yeah, I probably should have pointed the launchers backwards on this. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, but I probably didn't think the whole thing through particularly well. Regardless, easy enough, they have these tiny little engines, which will give us a maybe a kilometre per second of Delta V. I'm not sure how much I get total from it. It is not much. But we already have the spacecraft on a, a, an encounter that practically puts it onto an encounter with Lath. And then a you know small change will put us onto Jewel, and one will be one will descend at a different speed, so the the aero braking maneuver for the mothership doesn't happen at the same time. So yeah, we do a bit of uh, corrections here and there, and then we yeah we need a forty two meter per second burn, which is actually quite manageable. It only takes about a minute and a half which is probably one of the shortest burns that I've had to do in this thing. Um, it was rather welcome. The So yeah, the dual probe, we rename it of course to make sure. This one we want to give a decent kick. Um, even though it would arrive at dual as it is, we're, again we're trying to adjust its encounter time. So we actually accelerate along the orbit, paradoxically, and that by accelerating along the orbit, that actually means we'll arrive later. Funny stuff that, huh? Um, so e easy enough, we get onto the encounter and then we make an adjustment to its orbit to make sure that it's going to descend on the sunny side. These are solar powered. We don't want to be landing on the dark side. The Otherwise, we will find our instruments are utterly useless. And that would be embarrassing. There, you can see the, the probes lined up along their approach vectors with the, the lathe probe near the front. The lathe probe is we're going to make a quick correction to. It's going to encounter lathe around the back. So we just need to tweak its orbit to actually encounter lathe and then do so on the bright side as well. And then finally we have our primary spacecraft. It is descending. We want to make sure it scrapes through the Jules atmosphere at about 120 kilometers or thereabouts. We're going to use Jules' atmosphere to aero brake. Unfortunately, the way that it came in, uh, I got it back to front again, and we ended up on a retrograde orbit, so we have to rotate the whole thing around, otherwise our capture is going to be even harder. The lathe probe doesn't need to worry about coming in retrograde, and neither does a Jules one. Uh, the lathe probe will come in at some ridiculous speed, like... Uh, <laughs> It's going to come in at about 6-7 kilometers per second. Here we see it coming in, just lined up perfectly, and now we're going to make sure that we arrive on the, the light side. So there we go. We are coming around the back. You see that? So we're going to burn towards Jewel, and that will drag our periaps, or drag our encounter with Lathe around towards the sunny side. So we'll be able to see the ground and uh, power our instruments on the way down. Here we come, arriving at several kilometers per second. Yep, eight, is that eight? or That's lots and lots of kilometers per second. This thing is screaming through the atmosphere. And you can see the atmosphere gauge rising really, really quickly. We're aerobraking 
Um, we should probably have waited to deploy that <laughs> that antenna in the real game. That well, if they ever add aerodynamic damage, that might get torn off. In fact, that parachute might not have survived either. But no problem. We're now descending through the atmosphere slowly. We're firing up our instruments. We can see the air pressure rising. The gravity is telling us we have a surface gravity of 7.6 and the pressure is now one tenth of sea level on Kerbin. The temperature is still negative even at this altitude. As we get down towards the surface though, the temperature starts to rise up just above zero and then we land. And that is this mission over. It can remain as a you know, providing telemetry from the surface, I guess, but uh, really its its mission is largely over. And so we switch to the next spacecraft. We have, we've got to do our aerobraking maneuver around Jewel. You see that we've corrected our thing. We are aerobraking, so we want to get rid of those solar panels. So important that you fold them away, lest they get torn off and you find yourself without power at your final destination. It takes but a moment. It is also one of these things that could be embarrassing to forget. And so now we're prepared for the encounter. We hit the atmosphere going at eight and a half kilometers per second. That is a combination of our incoming velocity plus the potential energy that we gain from falling so deep into the gravity well of this giant planet. We're skimming through the atmosphere. We don't go too deep, but it's enough to slow us down and bring ourselves into a highly eccentric orbit without using any fuel at all. This is a great technique to uh, learn. But now we uh, want to fold out our panels again, now that we're out of the atmosphere, and we want to correct our orbit, because we don't want to re-enter the atmosphere until later uh, on the next orbit. So not only that, we want to correct the orbit and we want to get an encounter with Tylo, uh, because that's ultimately where we're aiming. Now, you, you probably have a lot of options how to do this. Also, uh, on the way up, I'm going to drop these extra probes and try to put them into their own orbits. They are going to try and fly around and encounter all the moons. That's their plan. Uh, it may not come out that way. <laughs> but yeah, now, um, so I'm thrusting and note to everyone, it's a really bad idea to try jettisoning lateral decouplers while you're under time acceleration in this mode. Uh, that was a big mistake. The thing almost flew apart. It would have been rather embarrassing. Um, but nonetheless, you know, we can get things going. You see it flexes around even when we're flying straight. We're just kind of completing the burn here. This is going to put us on our Tylo encounter. We're 124,000 kilometers away from Jewel at this point. I'm going to try and get an encounter with that. And you can see the fragments that we've dropped, the the decouplers, they're all in these different orbits now. So now we've got two space probes, we want to get them onto encounters with various planets. Dual Orbiter 1, well it's going to take the first encounter it can get. And the other Dual Orbiter 2, we're going to put it on another, the first, well the second encounter we can get from that. First thing we're going to do is make sure that we don't drop back into the atmosphere of course. That's Again, if important, because we've already burned, we've already got one atmosphere probe heading down, and it has a parachute. These ones do not. Look at the power of that tiny engine! Come on, there we go. It's almost like a. It looks like a soda jet or something. It's really rather minuscule. So there, after uh, burning a bunch of its fuel, um, it's gonna it's gonna encounter Val on the, its next orbit. The second one. I set up on a Val encounter. Uh, unfortunately, well, so what I did was I thought, oh, there's a Val encounter, let's do a nice close encounter on this one. There you go, bringing it down so it's going to swing by above the, the crust, the frozen crust at about 35 kilometers. But then I uh, stupidly realized, or I realized that I'd been stupid, and that the gravitational force from this was going to flip me onto an encounter with Jewel and crash me into the surface there. So I uh, tried to correct my course through to the other side so the gravity assist would save me. And instead, I compounded everything and I end up with a high-speed collision course with Val. Well, uh, I, maybe some cameras will pick up this information and maybe it'll make a nice crater or something. 
Yes, uh, dropping down onto Val at about 3.25 kilometers per second. Well, it was nice knowing you. <laughs> That's why we use unmanned probes for this. Dual Orbiter, of course, was a lot less aggressive. It's just gonna... It's gonna try getting to every single moon, and it will take its time. The plan will be that it will only alter its orbit if it has to prevent a collision with a tar another target. So there it is, flying past Val for the first one. No! We have to switch, we have to kind of juggle control between these things. And so we switch control back to the to the um, lander or the, the orbiter, whatever, the, the main mission spacecraft. And we want to put it into orbit so it tells us we need a 500 to 600 meter per second burn that's going to take 13 minutes. And eventually, well we don't do the whole burn in one because we decide that it's more important to do these burns slowly and keep control of things. But that's us, we are actually in a captured orbit and so we can leave that there while we switch to the other probes to make sure we control those and this is the the dual probe, this is the one that was intended to go down, it has a parachute just like the atmosphere probe in the Galileo mission it is going to head straight down into the atmosphere at some fierce velocity See, uh, 8.5, eight 9 kilometers per second, almost 9.5 kilometers per second. Oh, no, it's slowing down now. I guess I got that wrong. That was before it switched into the, the frame of reference of this. So 9.2 kilometers per second. This is going to get some furious g-forces. Now, in Galileo, it had an atmosphere probe and it was subjected to something like 250 g's. It had a an atmosphere shield, half of the atmosphere shield ablated away. And it was only complete fluke that the um, the parachute deployed, apparently. The parachute deployed a minute later than it was supposed to, and afterwards they realized that they'd installed the, gra the gravity sensor, the accelerometer, backwards, and it was just basically sheer luck that it had actually decided to deploy when it had. But uh, that went deep into Ju into Jupiter's atmosphere, just like this is, and we're you see us heading down on the drogue chute, 14 meters per second before the the chute actually deploys, and then brings us down to 0.8 meters per second. So this is a very very slow descent. And what happens when we reach zero? Well, we pass through the surface, and now the uh, altitude beater is increasing slowly as we continue to fall down. Once we reach minus 100, we stop, we bounce, and explode, and explode again. <laughs> this is These are very strange clouds that we're bouncing off of. So now I've crashed this expensive spacecraft into the surface of Jewel, it is time for me to remind you all to fly safe. <laughs>